Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 8 on turning sums into products. Right, so like somehow in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to take a sum and addition problem and turn it into a product, which, which you might say to yourself, why would I ever want to do that? And that would be a fair question. I'm going to ask you to trust me a little bit today that this skill will be prop cropping up later on in this course, all right? And we're going to be using it to do a variety of algebra, um, and it's going to really come up a lot then in Math 7 and Math 8 and high school math, etc. all right? So let's get right into this weird idea of taking a sum, an addition problem, and somehow changing it into a multiplication problem. Let's take a look. All right. Now, before we do that, we have to talk about one of the most important properties of real numbers, and it's called the distributive property. All right. So let's talk about it. If A, B, and C represent any three numbers, any three numbers at all, then if I take the sum of B and C and I multiply it by A, I can do that by actually multiplying B by A, multiplying C by A, and then adding them together. That's known as the distributive property. All right, so let's kind of take a look at the distributive property and verify it in exercise number one. Let's take a look. Let's test the distributive property with the following calculation. Five times the sum of seven plus four. All right, so in letter A, it says evaluate this expression by first finding the sum in parentheses, and then multiplying. Now, technically, the order of operations, which we haven't talked about much in this course yet, the order of operations would actually insist that we do 7 plus 4 first, and then multiply by 5. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, right, 5 times 7 plus 4 must be equal to 5 times 11. And that is obviously equal to 55. All right, so that's simple enough. I mean, obviously, 5 times 7 plus 4 must be equal to 55. Now, letter B says evaluate this expression by distributing the multiplication over the addition. So let's do that together as well. So the distributive property says, well, I can actually do this calculation in a different way. All right, I can do this calculation by distributing the multiplication by 5 and I can do 5 times 7 plus 5 times 4. Now 5 times 7 is 35, 5 times 4 is 20, and if I do 35 plus 20, I find that that is also 55. All right, so just like a little, you know, a, a little reminder of the distributive property. If I'm multiplying, a sum, and it also works with differences, with subtraction, but if I'm multiplying a sum by a number, I can multiply each part of that sum by the number and then add at the end. All right, let's take a look at another example of the distributive property. Exercise number two. Schuyler was purchasing six shirts at the store, each of which cost $23. Schuyler decides to add 18 to 120 to find the total cost of $138. Explain how Schuyler is using the distributive property to find the total cost. All right, so this is actually kind of a nice mental trick, okay? And what I'd like you to do is actually pause the video right now. Think about all the numbers that are being given in this problem and to try to figure out how Schuyler is using the distributive property. Take a moment to think about that. All right, well, obviously, if Schuyler is purchasing six shirts, each of which cost $23, then if she wanted to know how much the total cost would be, she would just do six times 23. And of course, <clears throat> we've reviewed how to do multiplication of multi-digit numbers, so you know you can do it that way. But here's what Schuyler is doing, which is very smart. She's kind of treating it as not six shirts that cost $23 each, but six shirts that cost $20 each, and six shirts that cost 
$3 each, right? So the idea is that Schuyler can think about the number 23 as 20 plus 3. Then she can do 6 times 20 plus 6 times 3. 6 times 20 is 120. 6 times 3 is 18. And that is 138. And this is kind of a, a very common trick, right? To be able to say, well, <clears throat> if I'm multiplying a multi-digit number, right, by another number, well, then I could break up the multi-digit number as kind of a sum. Oh, well, 23 is just 20 plus 3. So I can do 6 times 20, and then also do 6 times 3, and then just add the 2 at the end, right? All right. Now, strangely enough, though, the whole point of what we're going to do today is to actually reverse, reverse the distributive property and go from here back to here. All right, so let's start doing that in the next exercise. All right, exercise number three. For each of the following pairs of numbers, determine their greatest common factor. All right, so this is something that we did in the previous lesson. We want to find the, the greatest common factor. And we did that by both thinking about sort of all the different factorizations, uh, using factor trees, and also just by thinking about what the largest number is that divides into the pair of numbers evenly without a remainder. All right, so let's try to think about it that way just for now because it kind of speeds things up. So for instance, 20 and 28. If I'm looking for the greatest common factor of 20 and 28, I can think about the largest number that would divide into both. Now, they're, they're both definitely divisible by 2 because they're both even. But they're also divisible by 4, right? Because 4 goes into 25 times and it goes into 28 7 times. And there's nothing bigger, no number larger, that goes into both 20 and 28 evenly. So the GCF in the first problem is 4. Take a moment and think about what the GCF of 18 and 45 is. Pause the video if you need to. Now again, little tip that we talked about in the last video. If you're thinking and trying to find that largest number that divides into both 18 and 45, just think about the small number first, right? So 18, well 2 goes into 18, doesn't go into 45, 45 is odd. Uh, 3 goes into 18, and it goes into 45, right? 3 times 6, 3 times 15. Um, 4 doesn't go into either. Uh, 5 goes into 45, but not 18. 6 goes into 18, but not 45. 7 doesn't go into either. 8 doesn't go into either. 9 goes into 18 two times, and 9 goes into 45 five times. And in fact, 9 is that GCF. It's the largest factor or the largest number that divides both nicely. So the GCF is equal to 9. There's my 9. All right. So let's see how we can now use GCFs to turn sums into products. All right. Exercise number four. Consider the, the sum 18 plus 45. So those two numbers, 18 and 45, might look a little familiar. Letter A asks us to factor the numbers 18 and 45 using the GCF that we found in exercise 3B. All right, so remember, the GCF of these two numbers was equal to 9. We figured that out in the last problem. All right, so we can rewrite 18 as 9 times 2, and we can rewrite 45 as 9 times 5. All right, no big deal. Remember, all we're doing is replacing the numbers 18 and 45 with something that's equivalent, an equivalent product. Now, letter B asks us to rewrite each part of the sum by replacing 18 and 45 with the factorizations from A. All right, well, this is really simple, right? 18, we're just going to replace with 9 times 2. And 45, we're going to replace with 9 times 5. All right, again, I've just replaced 18 plus 45 with 9 times 2 plus 9 times 5. All right, we're well on our way to turning this sum into a product. Let's go down to letter C. 
Now it says, use the distributive property to take your answer from B and rewrite as a product. Evaluate the product directly. All right, so remember, the distributive property said if we have a number that's multiplying a sum, we can then take each part of that sum and multiply it by the number. But now we're going to go backwards. In other words, 18 plus 45 is 9 times 2 plus 9 times 5. So we can write 18 plus 45 as 9 times 2 plus 5, right? And again, think about it. If, if I gave you this problem, but in the forward sense, I'd say, oh, what's 9 times 2 plus 5? You'd say, well, that's 9 times 2 plus 9 times 5, in which case 18 plus 45 must be 9 times 7, which is 63. Right? We took 18 plus 45 and we changed it into 9 times 7. Now we can check this pretty easily in letter D by simply adding 18 and 45. So let's do that together really fast. Right? If I have 45 plus 18, obviously 8 plus 5 is 13, carry the 1, and 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 63. Now, if you wonder why in the world we'd ever take a sum and change it into a product, that is a fantastic, fantastic question to have in your mind. And we don't ever want to discourage you from asking those kind of questions. Why am I doing this? What is the purpose of this? One of the unfortunate things about what we're doing right now is it's kind of hard to justify in any real sense until we get to later algebra. All right, but this skill, this ability to look at two numbers figure out their GCF, and then rewrite that sum as the product of the GCF with another sum, that is an important, important thing to be able to do. So let's get a little more practice on it. All right, exercise number five. For each of the following sums, identify the greatest common factor of both terms, then use the distributive property to write the sum as a product. Evaluate the product and check your answer with the original sum. All right, so let's do a few of these together and then have you do a few on your own. Letter A, we've got 20 plus 15. All right, so the first thing I want to do is figure out the GCF of 20 and 15, right? Now that's pretty easy, just thinking about numbers that divide into both 20 and 15 pretty quickly gives me the fact that the GCF is 5, right? 5 is the largest number that can divide into both 20 and 15. Now what I want to do is I want to factor both 20 and 15 so that it involves the 5. And I've kind of tried to walk you through all of them very carefully here. So 20, right, is 5 times 4, and 15 is 5 times 3. And therefore, 20 plus 15 can be written as 5 times 4 plus 3, or 5, sorry about that, 5 times 7, which is 35. Right. And in fact, I think that you can check pretty easily that 20 plus 15 is 35. The bigger point here, though, is being able to write 20 plus 15 as 5 times 4 plus 3. Let's do another one together. 14 plus 56. That might be a slightly harder one to think about the GCF of, but again, keep in mind that little tip. Think mostly about the 14, right? 14 is 1 times 14 and 2 times 7, right? And one thing I definitely know is that 7 goes into both 14 and 56, right? Because 7 goes into 56 eight times, but I also know, right, that 14 can actually go into 56. 14, in fact, goes into 56 four times. So the GCF here, which is a little bit tricky, is actually 14. The GCF here is 14. The biggest number that goes into both 14 and 56 is, in fact, 14. So what do I do with that? I can now take this and write it as 14 times 1 plus 14 times 4. That would then end up being 14 times 1 plus 4, or 14 times 5. And 14 times 5 
is 70. Again, you can check 14 plus 56 and it works. All right, that one's a little bit trickier because 14 is the GCF of these two numbers. And so this first one where we write it as 14 times one, that can be a little tricky, it can be a little tricky. All right, so what I'd like you to do is get some practice on this in letter C and letter D. Step one, figure out the GCF. Step two, kind of fill in the blanks. And step three, work it down until you have the product of the GCF and another number. Figure out that product and check to make sure it's equal to the original sum. Pause the video now and take as much time as you need to. All right, let's go 20, 24 plus 64. So thinking about it a little bit, hopefully you were able to come up with the fact that doesn't look like a C at all. Um, harder to write on one of these boards than you might think. The GCF is equal to eight. Now 24 can be written as eight times three, and 64 can be written as eight times eight. And therefore 24 plus 64 can be written as eight times three plus eight, right? And then that's eight times 11, and that's 88. And of course we can check that by doing 24 plus 64, and that gives us 88 and checks. All right, the most important thing is to be able to get down to this step. 24 plus 64 is the same as eight times three plus eight. Again, could be a little tricky because of that eight times eight. So let's do another one, 18 plus 30. Hopefully thinking about the 18 and the 30, you figured out that the GCF was equal to six. So draw the line down here. My GCF is equal to six. Right. 18 is 6 times 3, 30 is 6 times 5. So 18 plus 30 must be 6 times 3 plus 5, which is equal to 6 times 8, and that's equal to 48. Again, a little check, 18 plus 30, 48, you bet. All right, and again, most important step is being able to do that. Identifying the GCF and then factoring it out of the sum. All right, we will see that again and again and again as we move on in math, all right? Factoring is an amazingly important skill because it eventually will reveal things in algebra that we can't just see from the sums themselves, all right? For now though, we just begin this skill with sums of normal numbers. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. This is the last lesson in Unit 1 of NGen Math 6, and it kind of brings together a lot of different things that we did. Factors, common factors, right, the distributive property. But in this particular lesson, we took all of that information and we used it to take the sum of two whole numbers and rewrite it as the product of the GCF of the two numbers along with some other sum. Right? And again, a little bit of a strange skill to be developing, but one that will be important later on. For now, I want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.